Over one third of food produced for human consumption is lost or wasted. Not only is this an affront to the 855 million hungry people, but it is also a major concern for both the global economy and environment. The United States alone produces over 37 million metric tons of food waste per year, an amount that costs the nation one trillion US dollars. And that's only the monetary cost. The energy required for the production, harvest, packaging, and distribution of food generates more than 3.3 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide. In landfills, organic waste has little access to air, water, and bacteria. Its slow decomposition releases methane, a gas that is up to 25 times more harmful to the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimates that if food waste were a country, it would come in third in terms of its impact on global warming. The contribution of food waste to climate change is irrefutable and cannot continue. The more the climate destabilizes, the larger the threat to agricultural lands and food security. It is projected that by the year 2050, the world population will have reached nearly 10 billion, Feeding that number of people will be immensely challenging and compounded if our farmland is compromised by global warming, droughts, and severe storms. We cannot meet the challenge of feeding a population of that size simply by creating new farmland and growing more food. Cutting down trees and clearing land is not the solution. Forested areas are carbon dioxide sinks, natural reservoirs that absorb harmful greenhouse gases from the atmosphere and are essential in our fight against climate change. What we need is to focus our efforts on better resource efficiency. We don't need more, we just need to use what we already have more wisely. Hmm. According to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, the amount of food wasted worldwide is enough to feed 2 billion people, which is more than twice the population of the hungry. Though the majority of food waste worldwide occurs on the farm, a large amount is wasted by the consumers themselves. In medium and high income countries, as much as 40% of the food waste occurs in markets and households. Food wasted at the end of the supply chain is particularly uneconomical because it has accumulated so much value. Water, energy, money, time, and human labor have already been expended in order to move the food from the farm onto our plates. Luckily, consumer food waste is preventable. It is not due to poor harvest or processing or inadequate storage and refrigeration. It is due to the attitudes and behaviors of the consumers themselves. Changing food culture is not an easy task, but one nation is leading the way. In recent years, Denmark has become one of the most sustainable countries in the world. In addition to the plethora of renewable energy initiatives, the nation has also paid close attention to the issue of waste. In the past six years alone, the nation has reduced its food waste by an estimated 25%. What's their secret? Well, that's a, that's a tricky question. Why does people in Denmark care about waste more than in the United States, for example? Maybe it's because Denmark is a small country, so waste is not... It has never been something that you can just drive into the desert and nobody would see it. We have to cope with waste. According to the Danish trade magazine, Denmark has more anti-food waste initiatives than any other country in Europe. Though the Danish parliament plays a major role in the fight against food waste, the effort is largely bottom-up, with individuals leading the way. Number one in food waste in Denmark has been uh, Stop Spill Amal, which is uh, Selina Jung, uh, you might have met her. Um, and, and she has been uh, the one person uh, lifting this issue from almost nothing. We are the guys who basically started the whole fight against food waste in Denmark 11 years ago. And it has become so huge. Basically, our mission is to empower people to stop wasting food. Now, we, we don't go around and 
point fingers, you know, saying like it's the industry or it's the consumers. Because, you know, if you want to point fingers, nobody wants to talk to you. So it's not about what you're doing wrong. It's about what you can do better. We are supporting all actors in the Danish food value chain to, uh, to work with the solutions of tomorrow uh, in the whole world. It's a way of talking business. I mean, uh, if you ask uh, retailers, uh, industry, consumers, they don't like to waste uh, food because food is also money and money talks. We don't waste anything because we cannot afford to waste anything. When we opened the restaurant 12 years ago, we were financially a little bit unstable. So we really had to be careful about the produce. And when you have a Michelin restaurant like Kinkin, Kin, you only want top, 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 top products. They're very expensive. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Danes spend, on average, twice as much as Americans do on food. Perhaps it's the high cost that makes Danes less willing to let anything go to waste. To combat food waste, Kinkin, Kin, when we opened, we have what we call the back door. All our restaurants in Copenhagen have a back door where we sell takeaway, uh, food for takeaway. Every day, all the raw materials that hasn't been used in the main restaurants, uh, fish, vegetables, meat, whatever, is, is simply being transferred into the back door and is being sold there. So within 24 hours, all the produce that we buy has actually left the building and nothing has been thrown out. I find it crazy that more restaurants don't do this. I don't I really don't understand why other restaurants don't do it. It's it's because it's that simple. Um, but it worked for us and uh, it made us survive. So we I mean, I've, we, we didn't do it to save the world, to be honest. We just needed to survive. Waste costs money mm. uh, and there's a really good business case for saving food waste. The problem, though, is most businesses don't understand the true cost of waste. Most people, when you talk about waste, they just think about the cost of waste disposal, but not all the costs of the, the energy and the labour and the transport and the water. Most businesses don't really appreciate the true cost of waste. Once they know um, and they see the business case, they'll often then take action on it. They'll save money and they'll save waste and they'll save planet too. New companies are merging all over Denmark, employing circular economic systems. How, how many of you know Too Good To Go? Almost all of you, yeah. Too Good To Go is a Danish app that connects users with unsold food from shops and restaurants in their area. In Denmark, for example, at the moment, we're saving somewhere between five and 6,000 meals per day. That means a bag of food that somebody picked up from a store that would otherwise have thrown this food out, takes it home and eats it at home. We are not only here to save meals, we are also here to make the wheels spin. And that means our mission and our way of being in the market is that we want to inspire and empower everyone to take action against food waste. And this is, this is what it was unique for me to end the good to go, that it's not, it's not, a, it's not a commercial setup, it's a, it's a movement. It's an action to reduce food waste and help uh, the, the people in the society to empower them, inspire them to do something in their everyday life. So one of the things that we're trying to do right now is partnering up to change date labeling, for an example. People misunderstand the best before date label uh, and, and believe that they have to throw out the food when it's reached its best before date. That's not the case. Um, so what we're pushing for is that the big food manufacturers is changing that date label to say best before but not bad after. Uh, that, is gonna, that is gonna explain it more and it's gonna explain to consumers that you can actually use this food, just make sure you use your sense and smell it and taste it before you eat a lot of it. Uh, but just make sure you don't throw it out because of the misunderstanding. Best before date is the date which uh, the people who make this guarantee a high quality of this product. But who says that it doesn't taste well the day after. We Food, a discount grocery store in Copenhagen, sells goods that commercial supermarkets can no longer sell, either for being incorrectly labeled, past the best before date, or damaged in transit. You can see it's a little dirty, but it's there's nothing wrong with it. Our volunteers are just cleaning it, and then we sell it. The shop also sells things that are out of season, like Christmas cookies in July. We actually had a lot of Christmas goods. Because all the big companies, they don't want to sell it anymore and people in Denmark are tired of Christmas. So we have, we have sold a lot of uh, Christmas cookies, candy, for a very low price, 70% under normal price or something. Uh, and people buy it at our place, but not in the supermarkets. Because WeFood receives its products as donations from other companies, 
it is able to sell them for a 30 to 50 percent discount. The low prices have made the shop quite popular and effective. People who come here are um, engaged in food waste, uh, people with low income, um, people like you and I who just want to, to find a, a good thing for a lower price. So actually, everyone is welcome in our shops. In the last year, WeFood has saved 175 tons of food waste, the equivalent of 12 elephants. The majority of that edible food would have been wasted solely because it was not considered aesthetically pleasing. Thinking about it, I, I think the retail sector has a problem with, um, with the visual quality of their products. It's, it's very important for them that they can present perfect products in their displays and that consumers get the right impression. If you want less food waste, then you need the customers to be more open to uh, not good looking vegetables because I think they take like maybe 40% out of the harvest because it doesn't look like the others, like uh, the potato is too big or too small or too like, and they can't sell that as the same kind of potato, but here it doesn't matter at all. We can use everything here in the kitchen, no matter how it looks. Anne and her husband Jens run a 13 and a half acre organic farm outside Copenhagen. Instead of selling raw produce like most farms, they use their crops to make unique dishes for Mould, the restaurant they own and operate. The owners of Mould are proud that the restaurant is self-sustaining and serves only food grown and prepared on site. It's a challenging concept to have, to only uh, use your own produce, especially in Denmark during winter and spring. Uh, this is not uh, California, so it's not that lush, and we don't maybe have that broad variety of things we can grow here, but uh, we have enough. Designing a menu with limited ingredients requires thinking outside the box. We think don't use the vegetable as a substitute to meat. Don't make it look like meat. Uh, like you can make a bean beef or something like that. Bean hamburger or um, try to enhance the way it is a bean. Like to enhance it like bean is interesting. You don't have to make it look like meat or something. Consumers need to be less conservative. They need to rethink what it means to cook and to eat. Fortunately, there are many tools that individuals can use to find inspiration. When you do dishes, I mean, Google is a very good tool these days with Instagram and all these things today. The dish I cook today is, is out on the web, you know, five minutes later for everybody to pick and get inspired from. And the other way around, I do also get inspired. The internet has provided an infrastructure for humans to connect and communicate internationally. We need to share the ideas from the Northern Hemisphere to the Southern Hemisphere and the other way around in order to make sure that we all uh, collaborate in, in reaching out for, for the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We will never reach that goal if we do not work together. And that means that both the public, the private and the, and the research, uh, the organizations, we all need to gather and share the good ideas. Four years ago, the Danish government created the World Food Summit, an annual event designed to bring together experts from a variety of backgrounds and cultures. And you know, today we're at the World Food Summit at the Danish parliament and attended uh, by the Crown Prince of Denmark and the Minister for Food and Agriculture. It's amazing. Good afternoon and welcome to the fourth annual World Food Summit in Copenhagen organized by the Danish Ministry of Environment and Food. Our goal over the next few days is very ambitious because our job here is to identify key actions that will create a safe, healthy, and sustainable global food system for all in support of sustainable development goals. So if you look at the current food system the way it is right now, I think it's important to realize that this was a response to the needs of the time, the growing population, the need for food for survival. So the current food industry that we have was actually set up and is still set up for scale and for efficiency. So it was for mass production to attract
address hunger and to meet the needs of the growing population. Despite the changing times, crop subsidies and food aid policies continue to encourage farmers to produce as much as possible without regard for actual market demand. Though cheap food has the benefit of being more accessible to food insecure or low income communities, it also has consequences. 2.2 billion people are obese today. I just said that 800 million people are going hungry to bed. So this is a two-sided challenge we need to face. Uh, we also know that the middle class will be uh, accelerating and in 2050 we expect to be like 5 billion in the middle class demanding food like we do today. It, it does mean that we have to produce as much food the next 40 years as we have done the last 8,000 years. By 2050, I mean, we have to produce 70% more food, if not even more food, to feed the growing population. We already have all the food on this planet, but we just, you know, need to redistribute it much better and use it, utilize it, instead of just growing the food to feed our garbage. But things are starting to change. The Danish EPA estimates that their citizens have reduced 14,000 tons of consumer food waste in the last six years. It's not much, it's 8%. But it is in six years of the period where we had economic upswing. And when there's economic upswing, you know, people get more money between their hands and they waste more. They buy more, they eat more, they waste more. And it, in that period, people are actually starting to waste less. Though Denmark's success is not necessarily replicable by other countries, it can still serve as a source of inspiration for nations around the globe. What we do, I mean, you cannot just take our solutions and put to the entire United States because it has to be, you know, the food culture must be respected and, you know, the environment and the, you know, the geopolitics, it's, it's very different. Only to open-minded collaboration we can move ahead. We will never reach the UN Sustainable Development Goals if we do not work together across borders, oceans and cultures. But cooperation alone on a broken system that is not fit for purpose is not going to get us there. Where is the sense of imagination? Where is our ability to see beyond what we've always done to what we must do in order to move forward? So, it is possible. That is the good news I am here today to tell you. It is possible. But it will require multi-sectoral action. We need private sector. We need government. We need civil society. We require academics to give us the evidence and the data to support the work that we need to do going forward. And we need individuals. Every individual has the power to make a difference. They may not be able to rewrite the law or control big business, but they do have the power to change their own habits and behaviors, to prevent food waste in their own homes, and to encourage their friends to do the same. Cultures change one person at a time, starting with you.